Now that we've explored the basic features of the Online Designer, let's explore some advanced features. Branching logic is what you use when you want to hide a question, or hide a series of questions, unless someone answers a specific way. For example, on this form, if the participant says, yes, I do like the picture, I want the questionnaire to stop there. However, if they say they don't like the picture, I want to know what kind of picture they do like, so I want to ask them to upload their favorite picture. To do this, I'll use branching logic. You access branching logic by clicking on the green arrows. You do the coding for branching logic in the child questions, the ones that you want hidden unless they make certain answer choices. In branching logic, you can either type it out by referencing the variable name and using some advanced syntax to form an equation. If you want to do this, I recommend you click on the How do I use the advanced syntax link, which will take you to the branching logic section of the REDCap FAQs. For most branching logic, you can use a drag and drop logic builder for quick and easy branch logic. Here, you scroll down until you find the variable you want. For me, it's like picture, and I want it to be answer choice no. So I click on it, drag it over to the box, and drop it. I can select multiple criteria for my branching logic and tell REDCap that I want the field to show only if all the things I choose are true and logic, or if any of the things I choose are true or logic. If you want to mix AND and OR logic, you can drag and drop the variables that you want over to the box and then switch to using the advanced branching logic to make the changes that you need. Especially if you're doing some complicated formatting, make sure you test your branching logic thoroughly before you move your project to production. If you have multiple fields that need the same branching logic, you can always just copy the logic from one and quickly paste it into the advanced branching logic syntax box on the other forms. There are two more types of fields that we're going to discuss. The first type is a calculated field. You saw this field when I was doing the data entry. After I typed in the number of times I watched movies in a week, and the number of times I watched television in a week, REDCap added them up for me to say how many times I watched movies and TV in a week. REDCap is capable of performing basic mathematics, but it really is not a statistics tool. In general, wherever possible, we recommend that you just collect the raw information and do the calculations yourself on the back end of the process. This will help you get the most accurate results. However, sometimes you need to have a calculation show up in a document. For example, if you ask participants their height and weight, you can calculate their BMI. If all you want is the BMI, then wait and calculate it on the back end. But if you have other questions you only want to show up if the BMI is over 30, you can have REDCap calculate out the BMI, and then use branching logic to have the questions only show up if the BMI is over 30. When you're doing calculated fields, You'll have the same basic field label and variable name that you do with all the other fields. Then you tell REDCap what the equation is you want it to calculate. If you're calculating based off of fields where they've already entered data, such as height and weight, or how many times you've watched movies and TV, you will use the variable name in square brackets to form your equation. If you have any trouble forming your equation, this link, How Do I Format the Equation, will take you to the Equation section of REDCap's FAQ. The last kind of fields we're going to talk about is a matrix of fields. With a matrix of fields, you'll have a list of fields down the side, or a list of questions, and then you'll have some kind of ranking system going across. This is particularly useful if you need to develop a Likert scale, one of the scales that goes from strongly disagree to strongly agree. To form your matrix, instead of clicking on the Add Field button, you'll click on Add Matrix of Fields. Here, you have the option to put in a header. This can be one question where you have a variety of answers that you want them to rank, or it can be instructions for answering a series of questions below. Then you'll enter the field labels, the questions or items that you want your data entry person or participant to see, and the variable names that REDCap will use to refer to them. Then you put in your matrix choices, one per line. You don't have to put a choice label over every line, but you can if you want to. You can choose whether you want them to answer a single answer, which will be a radio button, 
or if you want to allow multiple answers, in which case you'll use checkboxes. You can also force a choice by choosing to allow them only one choice per column. Finally, you'll provide a matrix group name. This is similar to the variable name. There's one more feature that you can use in these fields that I want to explore with you today. That feature is piping. Piping is a REDCap feature that allows you to help personalize your data entry form, surveys, survey invitations, and more. This field contains an example of piping. Previously, I had asked them what their favorite genre was. Here, I could just ask the question, how much do you like your favorite genre? However, that's a little impersonal. I would like to ask them, how much do you like action or comedy? To do that, I can use piping. With piping, I place the name of the variable that I want to see in brackets. Then, when they go to enter in the information, this is what they will see. Here, she chose science fiction, so now the question reads, how much do you like science fiction? If I change it to comedy, the piped question changes. This can be very useful for helping you to personalize your data entry forms a little bit. Finally, you can always check what your instrument is going to look like during data entry by clicking on the Preview Instrument button. This will give you the view that you will see when you are doing data entry. Branching logic and calculated fields won't work on this page, but it still gets you a chance to see what your form is going to look like in the end. Finally, I want to touch on the Data Dictionary. The Data Dictionary is more of a programming way to create your project. It is a CSV file that you will probably open up in Excel. Here you'll get a list of all your field names, form names, any section headers you have, field types, the field label, the choices, field notes, validation, flagging identifiers, branching logic, and so on. The data dictionary usually isn't the first place that you're going to want to go when you're creating a REDCap form. However, it can be very useful if you have a lot of very repetitive fields. For example, if you need to list 10 different medication options, and all that needs to change in them is medicine 1, medicine 2, medicine 3, it is a lot faster to go into your data dictionary and just copy and paste the fields and then run a find and replace on the numbers than it is to work in the online designer and to create all the fields manually. It can also be easier to search in the data dictionary if you're trying to figure out why a particular piece of branching logic or calculation doesn't seem to be referencing anything or isn't working properly. The data dictionary is a useful tool, but it's probably not the one you're going to use the most. So that is a basic overview on how you create a form in RETCAP. When you sprout your project, spend a little bit of extra time just playing around with things. See how different options work for you. Does the formatting look like what you want? Are you able to include all the information that you want in the choice? Does the flow of data entry go smoothly? If you've been doing a lot of typing, you might want to consider a drop-down box over radio buttons, for example. Whereas if you're doing a lot of mouse work, it may make more sense to use radio buttons. These are the sorts of things that you just need to play around with and find out what works best for you, your data entry person, and your statistician. Now, let's take a look at how you get information out of REDCap.